though my card show strategies generally include pulling up a chair to the bargain bins to flip through piles of cards in a timeless casino-like trance of cardboard zen. For my latest show visit, I was on a strict time limit of one hour. In and out, and back to work. That single hour, though, was the best part of my day. With a determined pace, I quickly made my way through the two rooms of the show, attempting to quickly identify the offerings. I was about halfway through when these two boxes stopped me in my tracks. This was a rare organization of things. Zooming in, you can see the names. Many of these names are usually laid out in cases for easy browsing. Here, though, they were just in top loaders, hanging out in a good old box. This was a box worth a few precious minutes of my short card show time. The box was mostly low-grade, but some great cards nonetheless. Since it was organized alphabetically by player name, I went right for my favorites. Carlton first, because C. And boom, a Carlton rookie. The dealer came over. He told me that he had just picked this box up in a collection buyout and he hadn't been through it yet. And he didn't even know what was in there, really. So what do you want for the Carlton? He took a quick glance. That's pretty beat up, isn't it? He said. And yes, the corners were soft. There was some surface snow and a minor surface wrinkle right on the side just off the brim of Carlton's hat. But that's still a Carlton rookie. The top loader was really scratched, making the card appear worse than I suspected it was. Instead of asking to take it all the way out, I wanted to see where his price was. He gave the card back to me. With a look, how about ten bucks? Done. I pulled out a Hamilton faster than Lin-Manuel Miranda. I later pulled the card out, and I was right. It still had soft corners, and still had the little surface wrinkle. But the eye appeal was way better than what the scratched-up top loader let on. For ten bucks, I count this in the win column. A quick glance at my watch, and I had about forty-five minutes to go before I had to get back to work. So I shook the guy's hand but noted the miscellaneous vintage column before I walked away. Hmm, if there's time, I'll swing back. Carlton rookie in my front shirt pocket, I briskly walked into the second room. I stopped at a vintage dealer who also had well-organized boxes. Typically, I'm more than happy to dig through a dealer's unorganized mess, but this day I just didn't have the minutes to spare. The guy had vintage cards arranged by year, set, and card number. Excellent for card sharks like me who know what they want. And what I wanted was a 1952 Bowman, Connie Ryan. Ryan only played for the Phillies in 52 and 53. The bulk of his career was with the Braves. He was a utility infielder with an average bat. I've been looking to upgrade my 52 Bowman, Connie Ryan for a good while now. My copy is in what you would call ultra-low-grade condition, if that's a thing. And thanks to this dealer's precise organization, I was able to pull out this Ryan out of the stack. A huge upgrade from the one that I have. Side by side, you can really see the difference. No prices anywhere to be seen. So I offered five bucks, which is my standard offer for a 50s Bowman Common in good shape. And a fair price for a 70-year-old card. He accepted. Lincoln out. Handshaken. Off I go. 35 minutes left. I was rounding the corner when I watched a dealer pick up a four-row box and lose his grip. In a horrified slow motion, I watched it all splash down. Well north of a thousand cards fell to the floor. He tipped them to the inside of the booth, not to the aisle. He was an older dealer and pretty heavy, so getting down on the floor to pick them up was a challenge. A number of people who were close by offered to help, but he shooed them off. And I get that. When asked, do you need help? The typical and very human reaction is no, I don't. Admitting you need help can be demoralizing for many people, myself included. So having rejected the offers from passers-by, he slowly started to pick up his cards. And this poor guy was struggling. My experience has always been, 
If you ask someone if they need help, they'll say no. But if you just start helping them, they'll say thank you instead. So I spent my last 30 minutes at this show picking up cards that weren't mine and helping this dealer get his boxes back in order. I didn't ask. I just knelt down and started picking up the cards. The guy was embarrassed, sure, but he had a good sense of humor about it. He cracked a joke about not being able to get off the floor if he got down there, and I cracked a joke about this being the worst way to flip through a mixed box of cards. We made fast friends, and in relatively short order, his cards were off the floor and back in the box. Of course, they were all disorganized now. I joked that I didn't have time to help him organize them, but if he'd let me take the box home, I'd be sure to organize them perfectly. He smiled, his embarrassment waning. I was dressed for work, not in my usual Phillies gear, so he asked me who my favorite team was. He went into his autograph box and pulled these two cards, a thank you for the help. Neither Michael Bourne nor Marlon Byrd are very big names. They were both prospects who never really made their mark, but that wasn't the point. Never to look a gift horse in the mouth, I took the cards and wished the guy good luck for the rest of the show. I had to scram. Walking towards the exit, I kept thinking of that miscellaneous vintage row from the first box I looked at. Nervously checking my watch, I decided I had the few minutes before I needed to hop on a conference call, and I'm glad I did. Rifling through with the flickering fingers of a 1950s typist, I scored a pair of 1953 Bowman colors, Smokey Burgess and Granny Hamner. I've got their 53 tops counterparts in the team master set, but we're missing the Bowmans, which in 53 are all beautiful images. The Burgess had two creases and rounded corners, but the Hamner was in decent shape. Excitedly getting the dealer's attention, I offered $10 for the pair, cash already out so he could see. He took the cards. How about $8 for the Hamner and two for the Burgess, because it's creased. A baseball card joke. With a chuckle, I gave him the cash and he gave me the cards, which I put in my front shirt pocket with a few scant other pickups from the day. Hurrying, I fast walked to the car, affixing my earpiece and opening my phone, ready to hop back on the soul-crushing void that is a conference call. Card shows are fun, whether it's four days at the National or an hour instead of lunch. My pile of cards was small this time, and most of my precious show minutes were spent helping a dealer clean up a big mess but it still was a fun way to kill a lunch hour. And helping others who need it but are too proud to ask for it is a cornerstone of a society in which I'd like to live. So as we burst forth into 2024, my hope for you is that you stop asking people if they need help and instead just start helping. Because we all need help from time to time and asking for it is the hardest part of receiving it. Thanks for watching. I wish you the best card show experiences in 2024, where there will be new baseball card stories, legends, and lore.